Hey guys, welcome to my $250 PC build. In this build, I used used parts off of eBay and OfferUp, and I'm pretty sure you guys could find some similar deals on the same website and apps. And let's go ahead and get right into the build. So for the CPU, we are using the i5-2400. It is a 4-core, four 4-thread four processor clocked at 3.1 GHz with the boost clock of 3.4 GHz. For the RAM, I went with 8 GB of crucial DDR3 RAM clocked at 1600 MHz. For the motherboard, I went something basic. It's just a Lenovo H61 motherboard that I found off of eBay. The graphics card in this build is an EVGA GTX 750Ti. The case used in this build is a Montec Flyer, which I found off of Amazon. For storage, I went with a 120GB SSD and a 500GB hard drive. And finally, for the CPU cooler, I used the Cooler Master i71C. Alright, now for the cost of the parts. So the motherboard costed $27, the SSD cost $20. The hard drive cost $14, the PC case I got a really good deal for, I got it for $20 brand new off OfferUp. For the RAM, I paid $21 for two sticks of those 8 gigs. And for the power supply, I got off eBay for $36. For the graphics card, I got that for $50. And for the CPU, I paid $32, but the CPU did come with the Intel stock cooler, but I wanted to use the other cooler for added like RGB. Anyways, continuing on. For the CPU cooler, I paid $20. And I forgot to add one thing. This would be needed if you're using a different case, but for um, the case I used, I actually didn't need this adapter when I actually was building the thing, but I used a USB 3.0 to USB 2.0 motherboard header and all that came out to almost $250. Moving on to the benchmarks, we benchmarked Minecraft at 1080p with most of the textures lowered and with render distance set to 8 chunks. We have an average FPS in single player set to 180 FPS. And the average FPS in Bed Wars was 165 FPS. This is without Optifine or any FPS boosting mods. Moving on to Rainbow Six Siege at 1080p with Vulkan API enabled at low textures and texture filtering set to two times with LOD quality set to ultra. We averaged around 85 FPS, which is good if you're playing on a 75 Hertz monitor. It's plenty. It's right there too. Moving on to Apex Legends at 1080p, mostly medium low settings uh, with VSync on because without VSync there was some screen tearing I saw. So with VSync on it was at a constant 60 FPS with no drops whatsoever. Moving on to Call of Duty Warzone. Now this is where it's a little bit different. So at 900p lowest settings it averaged around 30 to 35 FPS. At 720p lowest settings, it averaged around 50 to 55 FPS. Now, if you're going to be building a PC like this for $250 and don't expect it to play very demanding games like Warzone or uh, Cold War, it's more of a esports time type of PC game. Like you could play games like Valorant, Fortnite, CS:GO, Rainbow Six Siege. All it could play games like that. But when you're playing games like COD, it's just not going to perform the best. The reason the price to performance for this PC is great is because if you're going to buy all new parts for $250, you're probably going to be using a Athlon 3000G APU, no GPU, like no dedicated GPU anyways. And you'd just be stuck playing games probably at low settings at 720p. Um, even the less demanding games, but with this, if you're buying, if you're getting used parts anyways, and you're putting it together, you know, you got a dedicated GPU, a four core, at least a four core, four threaded processor, then you're definitely going to get some more performance using used parts than new parts for this price range. So would I recommend this for $250? Well, yeah, but if you were going to look for parts, I'd recommend that you try and you know wait a little longer try and find even better deals on parts like for the graphics card and cpu because i'm pretty sure that there could 
you'll find some better deals out there than I did because I didn't really look for that long but I'm sure if you look for like quite a bit then you're definitely gonna find better deals for better parts so I would definitely recommend this for anyone that's looking to get into gaming especially it's like PC gaming anyways but yeah just looking at seeing how much $250 could get you including some nice RGB inside the build I mean R the RGB itself was like an extra 20 bucks so I mean realistically without the RGB and if you're just sticking with a stock cooler this thing would have been like around 220 you know i definitely plan on doing more videos like this except i show like th the full build and stuff i'm definitely planning on doing that next time i actually am ordering more parts right now for another pc build coming in soon so stay tuned for that because i'm definitely going to do more pc builds and more tech related videos as well anyways that's all for today's video and i'll see you all in the next one